<coughs> well, I've never worked on this unit before, so take me a minute to. Well, pressure kicks on and shuts off. So it's shutting off on a low pressure situation, probably, until it equalizes. So. <coughs> Double check everything over here first. Worked on the other unit here not too long ago, and this switch was bad on the other unit. But that one seems to be doing all right, so save you the boring details of tearing into the unit, and I'll be right back. All right, so I put my gauges on the uh, low side and verified that our uh, solenoid was opening. It's the pump down system, so let me show you that. All right, so well, here's the solenoid, and when the uh, unit is uh, calling, it opens up and allows the bridge to flow on through. And I checked pressure here at this uh, suction dryer and it is, uh, it's open. There's 150 pounds of pressure there. So we've got refrigerant and I took the uh, solenoid off and checked to make sure it actuated the solenoid. Took the, the coil off. And could hear it clicking and ticking. So that's, uh, okay, so Compressor kicks on for a second. And that's this uh, this contactor here, and I got to looking. Uh, I think this is the uh, compressor contactor. This one is probably the contactor for the condenser fan motors, but I see an in switch on this contactor, and I see a a uh, spade connector off of there, which may be. Uh, causing the condenser fan motors not to kick on so I'm gonna go ahead and de-energize and reconnect that so let's walk over here I could try to do it live with a pair of needle nose pliers but I'm gonna go ahead and power down safety first and just check our voltage powers off all right I'm just going to connect to this back terminal here. It's a little loose. We might want to, after we get this up and running, we might want to replace that. But All right, let's see if that makes any difference in our situation. Once we re-energize, it's probably going to take a minute for everything to uh, get going. All right, so I heard a click. I think the fan motor came on, which is probably it's probably this contactor here. All right. All right, so in a little bit, this one should energize. And we'll see what's going on with this one over here. Um, okay.
Okay, so condenser fans kicked on. But she's still shutting off. And the, okay, and then that just shut off. All right, so we're still shutting off. It's probably a pressure thing. It might be uh, suction, it might be high pressure. Uh, but let me dig into it, and when I find it, uh, bring you back. Okay, well after it uh, trying a few times as I was taking off uh, the covers here to check these switches, um, the unit went ahead and uh, fired up and started running. Very possible we had a uh, uh, high oil pressure situation. Uh, again, remember we found this uh, uh, spade terminal off, which kept the condenser fan motors from coming on. And uh, so, what I thought I would do here is just uh, double check these um, all these switches, and this would be a good opportunity for you guys to see how to check a switch and see what uh, see electrically how to check it out so these switches are all 120 volts so if I put this is only a, a, a single pole single throw uh, uh, so, or excuse me not single pole single throw. it's not a throw it's a it's a uh, it's a it's a open and close switch this is a pressure switch so uh, you see that it is adjustable um, and what happens here is that uh, this particular switch is the unloading switch and you see that we have power on that switch that tells you that it's open the switch is open and not closed and that's because one side of this is, is going back to a power source and the other side is going back to uh, common through the whatever it's controlling a coil or, or something of the sort but you can also check it like this you find a ground like here okay chassis is always a good good way to go so uh, this here has power, but this side doesn't, okay? So it tells you that switch is open, but this is a good way right here to tell you that that switch is open. So let's check this one. This is an unloading switch, so that tells you that that one is open. See? Power there, no power there. So when you check the switch across the terminals, when the switch is open, you have power on it. Let's check this one. Okay, and you see how that one is reading nothing. That means the switch is closed, so long as you indicate you have power. So, uh, you have power on one side, you have power on the other. But when you test the switch, there's no power. That means the switch is closed. Again, power both sides, and that switch is closed. So when you test on a switch and you do not see power, the switch is closed. And when you test on the switch and you see power, that means the switch is open. All right. Hopefully that helped. Um, I'm, I may do a little bit more in this video. I'm going to sit and watch this, make sure it runs good before uh, I call it good. Pun intended, but. Uh, this is a mammoth unit, and, and I thought it was funny that I was, was going to say, just don't let a mammoth unit like this scare you when you come up to uh, uh, work on it, because it's just like anything else. It just has a lot more controls, more bells and whistles and things of that sort. But uh, the long and short of it is, uh, you know, you got power coming in, uh, you got few, you got your you got your uh, terminal block, you got your fuse blocks. You got contactors are just a lot larger than you might be used to seeing and these are three phase uh, a lot of you guys might be used to uh, just single phase or 208 230 volt stuff uh, residential but uh, when you get into this uh, bigger large commercial and industrial stuff it's it's just it's just got more safety controls and stuff on it um, but what you do is you just find that deficiency and that's what we're looking for is we're figuring out what isn't working on the unit no you know, we got up here and the fans running. I just verified that we had good voltage and, and not a, a, a brownout or something like that. But, uh, um, you know, the, the compressor here, you start with, okay, compressor's kicking on and off, so let's go ahead and see what's causing it to shut off. Well, I didn't even get that far, and I found a loose wire. We knew 
from that that I, I already knew the condenser fan motors weren't coming on, but I didn't know what was causing it until we got in here and found that loose wire. Um, and then I wanted to just check all of our pressure switches because the the, uh, the compressor can be stopped by a low pressure switch. Um, so in the event of a low pressure, uh, what might cause that is a, is a leak. So if you if you lose all your refrigerant and the compressor kicks on and it drops below a certain pressure, it's going to shut off. Or um, this is a pump down system. So the way this works is, uh, is on the high side, um, the solenoid shuts off when it doesn't need cooling anymore. The solenoid shuts off, it pumps all the refrigerant, um, uh, sucks it all out of the low side, and stores it in the, in the uh, condenser coil, and uh, also drops in pressure when the pressure drops and it, the unit shuts off. It re-energizes the coil for the uh, pump down solenoid, opens that up, relieves the pressure, pressure goes up on the low side, uh, initiates that, that switch, uh, turns the contactor on and off and running. Now this one has uh, a couple of unloading um, uh, solenoids as well, so because this is a zone system, this handles multiple areas and several floors, and what can happen is, say one floor satisfied, and but may, maybe it's got four zones, and this unit does have four zones, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, but if that is, uh, um, if, if it's only calling for one zone, and actually I'll take you over there and show you right now. If it's only calling for one zone, it doesn't need its full capacity. So it'll open a solenoid valve and dump <coughs> some of that refrigerant so it doesn't, uh, so it's not running at full capacity. Okay, so we're going to open this up here. There's the coil. There's that uh, bump down solenoid, okay? So this will, when it's satisfied, this will shut. Uh, everything here, it'll, uh, it'll, uh, it'll suck it all out and store it in the uh, condensing coil out there. Okay, but see we got four different zones. Well, actually, we have a motor that's bad there, uh, or at least fell off, so I'm gonna have to get back there and fix that. And that reminds me, that unit over there has a motor that's broke and needs to repair as well. Actually, this one's got five zones on it. One, two, three, four, five. So when uh, when the maintenance guy gets back, he's off trying to get another unit fixed. Uh, I'll touch base with him and see if he wants me to fix that. I'm sure he will. So I'll have to crawl in there and, and fix that. That'd be a nice repair. It's nice and cold in there. But anyway, like I said, don't let this stuff... Uh, um, don't let this big stuff scare you. Um, I will say that uh, this particular uh, system of uh, uh, wiring schematic is a little difficult for me. Um, you know, see how you have uh, everything's labeled, you know, 18, 19. Over here, you got uh, 18, or let's see, where's, see, 1980 even there. So, but what happens is the way this schematic works is. Uh, each side of these wires originally were numbered, okay? So uh, if you find, see now that's been jumpered out. Uh, lots of things have changed on these. Um, but anyway, there's a seven and there's an eight. So what they'll have here is these, let's see if we can find one of these that's got a number on them. Let's just take this off real quick. All right. A lot of times these will have a number stamped right on the on the wire so it makes for easier tracing but for me when all the wires are the same damn color it's a little difficult to trace out so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take these little channel covers off and uh, like this one right here this channel covers off somebody must have taken it off at some point to trace out a wire probably these two because they're pulled out <coughs> Be careful sticking your hands in here when things are live. So 
so what I'll do is, like I said, I'll take these covers off and trace the wires out from the switches to see where they go. And that's the other, last weekend I was here, that's what I had to do uh, to find that the switch was bad. But yeah, there you go. Alright, well thanks for watching. We'll see you all on the next video.